Welcome everybody to Eye of the Serpent Tarot for another Pick a Card reading. So this is installment eight in the series that I'm doing with the wonderful Rena from Gold Key Guidance. We're doing this exciting journey through the major arcana, pairing them up in ways that we thought they kind of have a counterpoint or an opposite or a complementary sort of energy that was worth exploring as a almost a box set, so to speak. So today we're taking on a pretty big area because we're looking at judgment and justice. I'm looking at justice and Rena's looking at judgment. So what we're looking at here is with Rena's with judgment, divine law and your connection with divine law and the divine order of things and, and all that really big picture spiritual stuff. And then I'm looking at the, the law of humankind so looking at justice, at how that plays out here in the material world. So where Rena is probably going to focus mainly on your soul and your spiritual connection and how that like aligns with divine law and, and all of those sort of things. I'm going to be looking at your values, your ethics. Uh, I will touch upon a bit about your soul, just as I'm sure that Rena will touch a little bit upon how this manifests in the material world as well too, because we like to complement each other's readings in that way too. But... I'm really kind of getting a sense here of how do you see justice and how does that align with, you know, the culture or the, the situation that you find yourself in? And, and I'm going to be fairly broad about this. I'm going to really try and see whether I can get a sense of where your almost non-negotiables are because different people have, you know, people think that it's just a monolithic thing that is justice. But even... Even if you look at the justice system, it's built on law that comes from some form of political system that then brings about what is believed to be in the, the best interests of the community it serves. Then it's looked at interpretation of that law and then it's looked at precedent so that it's applied fairly over time, all of which are as much philosophical as they are immutable. So, so one of the things I want to sort of explore as I go through this is, is kind of how you connect to that. Are you sort of someone who justice is a long arc thing and sometimes there's compromises that are necessary to get to the ultimate goal? Or are you someone who says every step along the way has to be in particularly in alignment and so forth? Otherwise, no matter how worthy the goal is, it's somehow flawed. So these are philosophical choices. They are not, they're not written in stone. So that will make this really interesting and probably quite challenging to do as a reading. So I'm looking forward to doing it, but I'm a little bit, a little bit overawed at the same time. So it'll be really interesting. You'll be on this journey with me to look at that. So when I thought about structuring this, we will, we will kind of get a sense at the beginning about the nature of where the issue of justice, fairness, ethics, values, all of those sort of things is playing out primarily for you at the moment. We'll have a look at yeah, what characterizes your take on this? We'll have a look at how that's manifesting at the moment. Um, how does it connect to your cause? I will do sort of something to connect back to Rena's reading. And then I want to sort of like look at a kind of helicopter view about it, about where that the, the, the genesis, almost mythical genesis might be coming for, for why you see and, and work with justice in a particular way some spiritual support for you and we'll get to a point where I'm going to do a couple of questions using the split decisions deck yes no questions so just bear that in mind that as we go through the reading if there are two areas where you have particular things around you want an outcome you know a just outcome or you want to sort of think about what could be that then then I'm going to ask the question and or I'm going to ask you to think of the question and then I'm going to give you the answer each time. You don't have to do it on justice, by the way. You can do it on whatever you want at that point. If you want to kind of segue out to something else and then come back into the concept of the reading. But by and large, I'm going to be looking at it as though it was through the frame of something that had to do with values, ethics, justice, the, the right way of doing things and all of that kind of thing. And then we'll sort of finish with a blessing. So I just wanted to let you know kind of the journey because it is going to be an interesting one. So for the choice, as is often the case with this series, I have chosen three different decks. I really, really kind of meditated into ones that I felt kind of had an energy to them that, that would fit what I'm trying to get to here. So for pile number one, we have the Justice card from the, the Noose or Nels uh, tarot deck. For my, pile number two, we have the Justice card from the Dark Mansions tarot deck. And for poll number three, we have the Justice card from the Antiquarian Tarot deck. So the energy that you get even on that representation of justice might help you choose. You can go to whatever number you normally go to. You can pause and, and meditate, whatever works for you. When you know what reading or readings, and by all means, go to more than one if you want. 
when you know what reading or readings you want, the timestamps are in the description box below, as is the link to Rena's reading. Um, so when you know, I'll see you in your reading. Welcome, part one, to your reading. So you came to the reading with the Noose Tarot and this particular image. And this image is sort of interesting. Of, of all three, this is the one that I felt looked most like a very strong connection to divine law as well. So I think there'd be a very strong connection of this reading to Rena's reading, definitely. Because this looked like almost a, a Poseidon or something rising out of the water version of justice, of, of balance. And so to me, it's sort of big ticket issues about emotional things. So it makes me feel that there's an emotional underpinning to how you see justice. There's nothing wrong with that. It could come very much from your heart. And it's interesting, therefore, how it seems to be playing out at the moment, because I'm using here the Visions of Life Tarot, which operates more like an oracle for me, because when we get to the suits, it's not particularly clear what suits we're talking about. So it's, it's energies. But we have the Hierophant card here, and it represents conformity, and then we have Reunion. I feel like there's a big thing around justice for you about where you have had to fit in with others to, to be with people, and maybe even a point where you felt you were separated from those that you really connected with, or that rules of the world are keeping you separate from your soul tribe, your soul family in some way. So, so it makes sense these cards came up here because you have this almost forbidding character, which is a bit like the Hierophant, because the Hierophant is a bit like what are the rules and regulations of the world. It suggests that, that those who have come to this reading, your sense of justice derived out of that, but you have, have had a kind of an emotional aha that it has separated you from the truth of yourself and the truth of others in some way. So I feel on that level that you are people with, with looking at worldly justice where you feel there is a need for a shift to be more person-centric, to be more about emotion. And on that kind of paradigm that I was talking about in the introduction between following step by step very rigidly through to what we need to do is to get to an outcome, I think you're more on the end of what do we need to do as an outcome and what feels emotionally true. So you would be, you know, if you were in the, the justice system or in the political system or in the social policy system, you would be the ones that are saying, what is the outcome and the impact on other people? Not just what is the rule of law. It is like, what has become rigid? What has made us conform? And how has that strangled emotional uh, growth, spiritual growth, even business and creativity growth? So there's a very strong sense there of you wanting to reconnect to the human. And and have freedom and be who you are. So it's coming from a need here when we've got Eclipse in Leo, which suggests here with compassion, again, connecting more compassion to the rule of law is important to you, but also shine brightly like the star you are. Eclipse in Leo, it, it, I feel as though you have very personally felt that the rules that are around you, whether, as I say, that's just the general political rules that you're in, or whether it's rules in an organisation or rules in a family, has eclipsed your personal power and your personal shining and and that has taught you a compassion for others so for many of you you may have moved past that this might have happened in childhood it might have happened in school might have been in a workplace but it has born in you a sense of compassion a compassion to reconnect to the emotional and therefore with the moon in Sagittarius to discover what freedom would look like if one was free of some of the constraints so you're a little bit of a rule breaker but not in the sense of being sort of wildly anarchic, but there is there is a sense of, of assessment of this. You would be more likely to be in that sort of area of the kind of rule of law. You would be more likely to be the advocate than the than the kind of lawmaker or even the judge. I think I think there's an advocacy energy to this. So let's look at it in a little bit more detail for you. Let's have a look at what, what characterises a little bit more about your sense of what justice really is in this world. And remember, this is justice as it plays out in this world, how it impacts you and how it impacts those you care about, those you believe maybe need your support. Because I think you are a very supportive person. I think that's you are a very person-centric person. But I think you're in an environment or you've been in an environment where the rules were more important than the people. And, and you're going to be a little bit of a trailblazer to move outside of that. So let's just see a little bit more about your sense of justice in the world. Queen of Wands, Five of Cups, Nine of Pentacles reversed, Queen of Cups reversed, 
the devil reversed. Okay. This very much picks up this energy. Firstly, you come, you are a very charismatic person, I would say. It maybe has been hidden a bit because of the environment that you're in, but, but I think that you are rising out of that. You, you've understood. This is where your compassion has come from. I think you're naturally charismatic, naturally powerful. You may well have been in a family where that was held down. It wasn't seen as appropriate. You know, the children should be heard and so seen and not heard or something like that. But, but it's there. There's a fiery energy and you're very self-actualized. You know who you are. And the beauty about you around this is it's not ego on steroids at all. It, because you have experienced the thing that you're trying to help other people with, it comes from a very self-actualized and balanced level. And with the nine of pentacles reversed, it's all about community. It's all about people. You, you don't want, you want freedom, but you don't want just freedom for yourself. You want freedom for everybody. You want freedom and diversity and inclusion, whatever kind of words you want to use for that. You want that because you've suffered on some level from a rigid environment and you found your way out of it. Now you want to help others to do it. You want to almost, with this reunion, get people to re-see themselves rather than, than be constrained in some way. And what that means is that you are somebody who will focus in on liberating from the false emotional stuff. You'd be very anti-propaganda, I have to say, very anti-propaganda. Like, because it feels to me like looking at this, you're in some sort of environment where there's been an emotional manipulation to keep control. And that can be anything. Political parties do this all the time. They use emotional words to, to tell you, you know, what to do and what not to do. Yay, um, spiritual groups can do that. You know, this is what is spiritual. This is what it is to be good, while sometimes the leaders of the spiritual group do the exact opposite and see themselves above it. You're very finely tuned to that. So your whole thing is around freedom, the individual, and then how in community everybody can be supportive. Your, your sense of justice is about that. You would not think something was just if it did not serve a community as a whole and if it was not emotionally resonant and allowed people to fully express themselves. So it's a very creative energy, as I say. It, and, and on that continuum, you, you might negotiate a bit with the rules around things to get to that outcome. Um, rather than because I think you would intuit that going step by step with exactly the rules could actually just keep you entrapped over here. So as I say, there's a little bit of the anarchist about you, but not, not in a kind of free-for-all. It's more in a, in a community. You're very community and other people focused, and your sense of justice comes from that. So it's emotional. It's not, it's not kind of like, well, here's the rule of law, and this is what this word means precisely. As I say, you're an advocate. So let's have a look at how this is manifesting right now in your environment. The Empress reversed, the Nine of Cups, the Magician reversed, okay, the Three of Swords, the Emperor, wow. Yeah, look, you're a group where it is going to be around power in some way. It's around, it's around sort of, and, and where power is inappropriately, inappropriately used. Definitely. I think there's something here about a nurturing principle. You may well have either got this sort of fire in your belly about all this from seeing women, you know, within your family, your mother or others suppressed in some way, and you're not going to let that happen. You need the divine feminine, the connection to come up because you're seeing that the divine masculine, all the rules, you know, and the power is, is at the moment it's what needs to be liberated. It's what's ruling. The, the divine feminine is, is not being seen, but that's where the wish is. The wish is to, to reclaim that in some way. Or you could potentially have come from a situation where a divine feminine energy, a nurturing energy was the thing that actually held you down and you have to reclaim your own wish. But either way, this is, this is all about understanding the pain of and separating out from something that's not true. So yours is a deeper truth when you're looking at this. Very important to see Rena's reading because I think you're very attuned to the divine law here because the divine law is more about connection, community, all that kind of thing than it is about rules and regulations. But you, you are doing this in a very material world. You're doing it in a very power-oriented world and you're doing it in a world where there is a lot of propaganda, as I say, whether literally because it's in a political social cause or whether it's just there's a lot of gaslighting, there's a lot of people who would try and lead a group astray in some way. 
but they feel they look like they've got the the keys to the kingdom. They look like they're you know the lawyers who who sort of understand the system, but they've created the system. So you're trying to separate out from that and bring that more compassion back. So that you're involved in something around this, whether it is on a political social level or whether it's on a personal level. This is this is a real cause for you right now, and there is a pain point that you're trying to deal with, and it's it's about something that's not what it appears to be about a lack of truth that is masquerading as truth. Okay, so then what is your cause? I'm just going to draw three cards for that, though I think we've got a pretty good idea. Then I'm going to draw a couple of cards for the view of divine law that to connect to Rena's reading. So firstly, what is your cause coming out of all of this around justice? Ace of Wands reversed, Three of Wands, Four of Wands reversed. Okay, so this is a very interesting cause and it connects. What is going on here is that you want to release this freedom, this Sagittarian energy in particular, about philosophy, belief, ambition, all of those things. And you want to find a direction, ideally with others, but it has to be the right people. Three of Wands is a very interesting card because in this case we see three people, but often we see one person looking into the into the distance at, you know, sort of like a sea, you know, that they could go sailing off. And the question around the Three of Wands is whether or not you go on your own or you go with others. So I think this is like the cause to find the people that you would want to connect with uh, and, and unleash this to find a new way of being together a new creative energy. So it's almost as though the way that you could deal with this is creating a creative collective, if that makes sense, or a, or a new sort of group, a new direction. And it's like it's walking the talk. But it is trying to find that. And at the moment, I think you're trying to find the connection and those that will be honest and go forward um, and move away from those that, that we're using division as a method of control. And this is this energy over here. So, so you are about finding the right people to move forward with. That's, that's how it's playing out at the moment for you. So what does divine law, how does divine law connect with this? I'm just going to get two cards. This is meant to kind of be a bit of a taste for Rena's reading if you haven't been there already or an anchor to what you've already seen if you have seen Rena's reading already. So the Queen of Swords reversed, the Seven of Cups reversed. Okay. What this is saying is that in this world is where this gets real. That you do have you do have a cause that is about is about you know divine law, but at the moment there is a lot of energy that is critical of anything that's different, and this is about getting real and bringing that out. Not not you can't. What you have to do on divine law is make sure that you stay true to what it is that you're trying to do. You don't become the thing again that you're trying to deal with, but equally that you don't let the kind of the, the more critical side of things get in the way and make you feel that what you're doing isn't real. So there is something very core and real to what you're doing here, but the way that, and it is connected to divine law, but the way that it could be taken off course is to, is to build in you a kind of a critical way of looking at yourself or for you to start to take on the very elements that you're talking about as a process. So you remember, if you're on that end that is more about the end, end justifies the means, you do have to be a bit careful. On the other hand, if you're on the, on the side that says it's just the rules, baby, and nothing else, there's no progress. So there's always a double-edged sword to either end of the justice scale, so to speak. Okay, so let's, let's look at this on a mythos, like on a mythological kind of level. What, what are a couple of really core things that are driving this energy for you if you were seeing your life on a mythological level? And then I'm going to use a deck to look at around career and vocation and what you do in the material world, how to kind of address that mythology, whether it is leverage something that's very positive or whether it's dealing with sort of risks within yourself or within the environment. So firstly, we get... Pandora, <laughs> okay, and then we get Artemis, oh, okay, I actually think this is an answer to that to some degree, so Pandora, of course, 
is the the woman with all the, the girl with all the gifts. So this suggests that you have a lot of gifts. You know, you you are kind of you know your your soul journey is connected to this because you have the gifts to do it, and that fits back with the Queen of Wands. But she opened the box that let all of this out into the world. So I think there is a degree, and she was she retains hope. So I think one of the the, the things to deal with in this is that it's a long term process for you, and you are dealing with very strongly institutionalized rules and so forth. So keeping that hope when you see the chaos around is important. Therefore, Artemis, which is all about strategy and focus, that is an energy to help you focus and say, one, you know, what is the step I need to take now? What is the direction I need to take now? Let's see how that plays out around you know, your vocation, your career, those sort of things, how in the material world you take these energies. So Pandora, the keeping the hope in the midst of everything and using your skills in the midst of everything. Intuition, hidden knowledge, secrets at work, new talents. Okay, so you really do have the knowledge. You really are connected. You might doubt that with the Queen of Swords reversed. You might feel like you've opened a can of worms literally or opened Pandora's box and like what happens now? Follow your intuition. You have a lot of knowledge that you've brought in probably from other lives and from sort of spiritual connections. So remember, you are the girl with the gifts. And you don't have to be a girl, but like Pandora is the girl with the gifts. It's not you, if anybody, can deal with this chaos, but you need to follow your intuition. And then Artemis, of course, is about strategy. So that's in the mind. So let's see what we get there. Rising tide, your ship comes in. Entrepreneur, work from home. So yeah, like... Your strategy will take you where you want. And I think, you know, the rising tide, they say, um, lifts all ships. So I think that one of the ways that this is saying, one of the strategic ways of dealing with this, because you are other person-centered and you are wanting a community, is to do it yourself and be the role model. Because your success and your capacity to do it proves that it can happen. I really do think that many of you are in some sort of situation where the biggest threat to getting to true justice is people telling you it can't be done or you're wrong. But if you follow your intuition and your gifts, then you become the example, the strategic example of how this can work. So that's pretty exciting. Let's get you a little bit of spiritual support. Let's get you an archangel. And then let's also get a couple of messages from your higher self to, to support you as well. So the archangel that kind of watches over this, this quest for justice in the material world is Zavkiel. Wow, you are definitely a heavy hitter, I have to say. She's literally about creation out of chaos. Now, the interesting thing, because that fits with Pandora, is that the chaos that exists here is not the typical chaos. It's not, I don't think what you're dealing with is, is everything falling apart. I think you're dealing with something that is a very strong edifice. It's like the tower just before it falls. And you have to actually create the chaos in some way that is going to bring something new and better in its place. So she is about that. She's connected to intuition. So it's very much saying that she'll connect you to your spiritual knowing. And she's also connected to the Akashic Records, which suggests to me that there's something very karmic about this. You're bringing in skills, abilities, and understanding of this kind of world to help with whatever it is that you're dealing with. So a couple of messages from your higher self to support you, Pile 1. Have the courage to be free. Yeah, you've got to be the role model of this. You've got to be the role model. It's like that's that's what proves your strategy, proves your approach. And oh, to conform is to die inside. Yeah. Walk this talk yourself. I think that will bring the people to you. It will prove the point of what you do. And because it is coming from other people, it's coming from a caring about other people, it will naturally draw the right people to you. So it's a lot of power there and a very, very significant message you you're meant to shift the dial on what's going on around what justice is seen as at the moment and and you're meant to kind of as i say be an example of that so let's get you some stars to guide you because this isn't an easy path i've got to say it's a very active path around justice so let's see what we can get there aquarius yeah a lot of it is about philosophy and being a bit detached that's the artemis energy you know, being strategic. Tarot card is the star, having hope as well with Pandora. So having, you know, like believing in yourself and your abilities to have that hope to be strategic and take it forward. Jupiter, expanding, expanding. Yeah, this is the rising tide raising all ships. This is the sense of like expanding things, you know, good fortune and so forth coming in. You're a benefic influence. 
even though those that are in power now might not think that. And Chiron, it's healing. Ultimately, what you're doing is healing. The reunion of self with, with truer principles and so forth. So this is this is as much as anything a healing exercise, but I feel like it is operating very socially. That's the that's the thing that's going on. So let's do the let's do the yes no's. So as I said in the in the introduction, you don't have to do a question about justice. If you've got other burning questions, that's fine. But I'm going to be looking at the interpretation of this around justice and around your kind of typology, I guess, for justice. So I'm just going to shuffle. Pause if you need to. But I'm shuffling. Think of your first question. It's got to be a yes, no question. So question number one for pile one. And the answer is yes. Budding star, first blush bursting out on the scene. So if you have any questions around, are you ready to do this and to show and to walk your talk? Absolutely. If there's some decision about something you want to do creatively or something that you want to say, absolutely. Very much a good time to move forward with something. Okay. And again, pause if you need to. Think about your second question. And the answer to the second question is yes. The best medicine, getting the real scoop. So even if like you were wanting no for either of these, it's to think about what what that means and how you can take it forward. But certainly there's some big ticket yeses that things are ready to go through, that you, you really understand, getting the real scoop, understand what you're dealing with, you're ready to be seen. So it's very much showing if it's around this overall sense that we've been seeing here, that you're ready, you're ready to take a very significant step. So to finish off, I thought I wanted to bring a blessing because dealing with justice, dealing with the natural sort of rule of law in the world isn't always easy. And you don't have the most easy path here, though you're very well equipped to deal with it. But what blessing do you have as you follow this sense of justice in the world? A blessing for healing of injury or illness. So certainly if you were injured by this, you will heal yourself. But yeah, the healing, there's something healing. You heal, heal a wrong. You're going to heal a wrong in some way. You're going to heal a group of people. You heal yourself first and you'll be the example, but you're going to heal something. This is a very, very positive energy. But as I say, the powers that be may not be that happy with it, but it's necessary. Very, very natural and very much of the heart with all that green energy. So I think the world needs people like you. So I'm glad you're here. I hope that you enjoyed that reading. Do go and see Uranus because is, there is a very strong connection to divine law in this particular thing. I think you're very connected to that. So do go and see that if you haven't already. Beyond that, if you enjoyed this reading, please like and subscribe. If you care to share in the comments, I'd love to hear. Otherwise, I hope to see you in future readings. Welcome, Pile 2, to your reading. So you came to the reading with the Dark Mansions Tarot. One of the reasons that I felt drawn to the Dark Mansions Tarot is I felt that there may be an energy in one of these readings, so in, potentially in this reading, that is a little bit almost Dickensian. I always think when I look at the, the figures in the Dark, tar dark um, Mansions Tarot that that's kind of what what it feels like, that kind of time. And I felt that this justice character, the eyes are closed, which could be sort of like trying not to sort of like put a bias in anything, but it feels a bit severe. So I, I feel like if you're drawn to this reading, there's something severe to be dealt with. There's something a little bit icy. And it's interesting how that played out then with these cards. These come from the, the Visions of Life Tarot, which to me operate more like an oracle because it's not really clear what suits the, the minor arcana are in that we're coming from isolation, like imprisonment. And that, as I say, it has this sort of sense of like the five of pentacles. It has the sense of being sort of caught, tied up, locked up in some way. But it's, it's moving towards things that matter to the family, to the heart, to, to the connection of ancestors. I do think there's a very strong ancestral connection to this, cultural or ancestral to your sense of, of of justice. And there's a very strong energy here suggesting that you're moving from something difficult to something much better. So it could be a reconnection to that, or it could be a reclamation of that in some way. Uh, and you're moving from sun and Aries. So there's an ambition. It almost feels to me like an ambition that you had may have been blocked unfairly. But with sun and Aries now, new beginnings, a leap of faith, there is a capacity to break out of this. It's just believing that you can break out of it. It's like it, it, it just feels to me like people have come to this reading, whether it's you, know, you missed out on jobs that you wanted, whether you know something went wrong legally, or just in life that you felt like isolated and not connected and, and not, not connected to something bigger than yourself. 
and that kind of imprisoned you. There's a leap of faith. There's an opportunity coming through for you to really go forward with ambition and create who you are. Sun and Leo, so this is a lot of fiery energy. Going from this chilly energy to something fiery and warm, there's a kind of a warmth there. It feels like going from a cold prison to a warm home. So I like the energy of what it's saying is happening, but I feel like your sense of justice has to be reclaimed because I think something unfair has happened. And it feels like it's economic or it's, it's, it's sort of like, or it could be about not recognizing something in you, but, but that's going to shift. And your sense of justice is to reclaim that and can connect to all sorts of things, emotional things, material things, very 10 of pentacles sort of energy around that from almost a five of pentacles energy. So, and whether this is literally you or whether you see this for others, where you see how the severity of the world and the severity of the rules are stopping people from having that connection. And part of what you want to do is to inspire a sort of reconnection with sort of sense of family and community. That's a possibility as well. But there's, there's, there's just a movement almost from winter into summer here, which I like as an energy. So let's get a little bit more information on this. Let's see how, I think you would almost see justice as a very chilly thing but you want to kind of move it into something that is more warm and, and more celebratory of, of uh, one's ambitions. Like a, it really does feel like it's kind of around how, how do you be who you are in the world? That, that's where your sense of dislocation from justice is and your reclamation of it is to, to reconnect that to, to what matters within your community, within your family, that kind of thing. So let's get a little bit more information. So we're going to use Tarot and we're firstly going to ask how would we characterise your sense of justice, how you see justice operating? Four of Cups. Strength reversed. Three of Wands. The Hermit reversed. Ace of Swords reversed. Okay. Okay. I do think this is very specific. I think that for you, justice, you don't think that the way that natural, you know, mankind, humankind, whatever you want to say, law is really true justice. It's very important, I think, to see Rena's reading because I think you're probably very aligned with divine law. But I think you almost see the, the, the justice system in whatever way it's playing out around your life and around those that you care about is a kind of disappointing thing that it tends to rob people of strength rather than the opposite. So that so there's a side where you feel that the, that the system isolates and, and takes away the fire of creativity. And what you want to do is find a way to be free and release that energy, come out and be seen a bit more. Uh, and you're not prepared to to say what you want to do, what the new thing is, or your new belief thing, until you know that there is a road for you to do it. So there is a sense of coming out of imprisonment here. I feel like if you've come to the right reading, there's something about the system that you're in and how it's playing out in its rules, you know, its rules. And it's, you know, a, a really typical thing would be something like a workplace where you missed out on a promotion and it wasn't fair because you actually had things that you could bring that were really good, but they're not being seen in some way. The kind of rules and the, the way that, that merit is described is somehow not inclusive, for instance. So I think, I think you have a kind of a distrust of law and it could be you have a distrust about whether in theory, it's there, but it's not actually being enacted in, in like no, people aren't walking the talk. So, you know, you're sort of looking at, you know, you know, seeing political or something in the workplace where all the nice words are said, but it's not really happening. It's, it's disempowering rather than empowering. So I think that you would be an adjutant to change the way that that law is seen to free it up. So, so it's, you would actually work with that system, I think. I don't think you would walk away from it, but you want to bring a new idea, a new way of doing it, a new direction for it that doesn't rob strength as much. So I, I feel like you would be like sort of someone who in, in one way or the other, it's like social policy, political policy, legal policy, or you know, just within a group or whatever, starting to renegotiate the terms of engagement almost, because you can see that that will actually have a better outcome that there are kind of false negatives coming out of the situation at the moment. So, so you don't necessarily want to, to drastically change the rules, nor do you want to live by the rules. You want to have a different direction. 
a different interpretation, you feel that that will actually unlock a lot for people rather than, than limit everything in this sort of chilly sort of existence. So let's see, how is this manifesting right now in your environment? Queen of Wands, King of Swords reversed, Ten of Pentacles. Ten, I feel like that's, I'm not sure if that's a Ten of Pentacles card in that deck, but it has that feeling to me. The High Priestess reversed. The devil. Okay. This is happening in a very pragmatic, you know, it's a workplace, a family environment, a business, something like that. There's something very pragmatic about this. And it's it's very, there's a lot of power issues. And like there's a lot of bondage, bondage of new ideas, a lot of tradition. You're in it, it feels like you're in a very traditional situation in some way. And it's and it's not really spiritual. So, you know, any kind of spiritual energy you have around this, it's very hard to break through that because there's a kind of an edifice and it serves a lot of people. So, but it's not serving ultimately creativity, freedom and all those sort of things, but but this edifice is in place. It's hard to break out of it. And and it's not being fairly applied. But you you are coming in with a creative energy. You're a very creative person. You would find this far more frustrating than many. It would be like working in a bureaucracy actually, where you felt like it's just the same old, same old every day. The rules, you know, everything's very structured and so forth not necessarily fairly applied. Creativity is not even seen, let alone, let alone, and look, a particular type of bureaucracy, not all bureaucracies are like that. But right now, you've really started to understand what you could do, and you're ready to have that ambition. But, but you also recognise that there are people who will fight to keep the old order. And, and if you are going to engage with them, you're going to have to be very pragmatic, and you're going to have to play by their rules. So it's not anarchic, it's understanding the rules and how to deal with that. The other option is to say this is too, too binds me up too much and to move on, to, to make the assessment pragmatically, this is not the environment where I can do it. So that kind of depends on the situation. But you have a real ambition starting to come up in you. So what is your cause? The Fool. That's the end. The Ace of Swords reversed... The Four of Wands, the Nine of Wands. Okay, you are of the new rather than the traditional. So to you, justice in the world should allow for evolution. It should allow for growth. It should allow for new creativity. I just think you're in this chilly, rules-based environment of one form or another that's stopping that from happening. And it's interesting with the family matters, it's sort of like you don't create a legacy if you use the Ten of Pentacles to just keep everything sort of like as it is, like rigidly as it is, you only create a legacy by allowing growth, you know, because, you know, the, the elderly, you know, grandparents here then have parents and have children and it's like it's an evolution. So you're trying to keep the dynamism operating in something and have a harmony for doing that and give the energy to keep on keeping on because there's there's a kind of a block and you have to keep moving against the block. But, but you are here to kind of bring in something new, to shift the dial and to make make the sort of rule of law around this dynamic and heading towards something creative and evolutionary, not just rules-based and prescribed and very chilly, as I said. So how does this connect to divine law? So this is just a couple of cards to connect back to Rena's reading, if you've already seen it, to sort of put a, a point of view around this side of things on it. And if not, as a bit of a teaser for Rena's reading. So Ace of Pentacles reversed. Knight of Swords. Okay. So I feel that this is saying that the, the energy on a divine level for you, it's like the Ace of Swords, the Ace of Pentacles. These are both blessings, a blessing about a way of thinking, a blessing about bringing in a new material thing, that that, that hasn't yet activated, but you're getting a download like crazy about this at the moment with the Knight of Swords. So creatively and also philosophically. And there is a real impetus towards urgency now. And acting just to act, I think, because the Knight of Swords, just like the Knight of Wands, sometimes sort of rushes in before thinking it through. But I think on this divine level, that's what's going to be necessary. Something really different and electric and creative and just just going for it is necessary to bring this about because it, it, you are, you're like, it's like you need to, to break down the edifice of the tower. 
you, you need to kind of break yourself out that then actually helps other people break out. So I think there is there is a lot of downloads coming for you, but it's saying it hasn't started yet. It, there's a kind of urgency to think about what you want to do in that space. So let's raise this to a higher level. Let's raise this almost to the mythological. So I want to look at almost like the mythological energies that are operating underneath your or over, you know, depending on which way you want to look at it, your sense of justice in the world. And then I want to have a look at how that plays out in a practical sort of sense with your your vocation, your career, the sort of material things where the rule of law is particularly important. So the first of the sort of mythologies that are pr present in this energy is Helios, the sun, the sun, the sun, the sun, <laughs> bringing in the warmth. There is something about bringing warmth into this chilly environment. And the sun is the life path, bringing the life path back. It's, it's almost like you're bringing something back to life, actually. An organisation, a group, a spiritual cause, a social cause. It's, it's, it's kind of got so hidebound and so chill that it's, it's almost comatose. You're warming it up and bringing it back to life. And Theseus. Interesting. Theseus is the, th the founder of Athens, so something completely new, coming from, from journeys, from adventures and all that kind of thing. So we have this sort of like bringing back the warmth and, and starting something new. That's very much what this is connected to, breaking out of the old restrictions of the past. So let's just sort of see what we have in terms of how that plays out on a 3D level in terms of vocation. So around Helios, pyramid, powerful people, boss, CEO. And, okay, so... You are either dealing with those and you need to warm that up and get your allies or whatever with powerful people, or you are meant to be a powerful person yourself. You are meant to climb the pyramid. This is time for you to do that. Found your own dynasty and so forth. So what do we get with Theseus? Success. Brilliant ideas. So like it's saying you're going to succeed. That's the beautiful thing. Brilliant ideas. Sunny energy. You're the person to do this. Definitely. Definitely. And, and I think, you know, there's a lot to push back against. When you're bringing in the new, that's always the case. But you've probably got ancestral connection with all of this as well, like it's in your karmic connection and so forth. But this is a very strong indication you're going to be successful in whatever this is that you're trying to do. So let's get you an archangel and some advice from your higher self. So an archangel to watch over you bringing in this new idea this new thing and and how that would operate with the rule of law Azrael so yeah the the ending of one thing and the new beginning coming in Azrael is the the archangel watches over death life and death and and like the the cycles of of life and death but it's you know and, and sometimes a little bit of a forbidding character but but is actually quite kind so there's a kindness in this you you, you can help bring in the new in this and you can help let the the old die away in a very natural way. So what does your soul want to say to you to support this energy, Pile 2? A wonderful surprise is coming. Something entirely new awaits you. So, so you're going to get inspiration. And I think this is this Knight of Swords. Inspiration is coming. You might be sitting here thinking, like, I, I do feel stuck and the place I'm in is, is, is chilly as, as can be, but I don't know. I don't know what to do. But that, that something's coming that will surprise, will inspire you. Look out for it as a sign. And flames of desire, let them shine out in radiant light, shun the dark night. Like, yeah, so the desires you might have, but this could also be that you're going to find a partner, you know, like somebody if you're not, you're not already in a happy love relationship that's going to help with this as well too, that, that warms everything up again and creates a dynasty. So that's interesting. All right, let's get you some stars to guide your way. Neptune. Things aren't clear at the moment. So I think something's coming through and inspiration's coming through. But once it is, pay attention to your intuition because, and, and things might have been delayed a bit with the hanged man to get the clarity. But once it's sort of like, once this energy starts coming through, I think things will be a lot clearer. Uranus, then you go into the change thing and then you get to the sort of fool energy, what you're trying to bring in, your cause, the, the new energy, the new beginning. And... 
Saturn. Wow, that's three of the outer planets, three of the heavy hitter outer planets. Slow moving, so things take time. Big ticket changes around it. New structures. New structures, change to structures, and then creating the new structure coming out of it. Saturn is, is the ending of one thing with the world and the beginning of something new. So that's very connected to this. You're meant to shift the dial on, on you know, the, the kind of rules and the law around what is going on to kind of liberate it, I think, and make it more more warm, as I keep saying. It's, just, it's all about warmth. So now we've reached the point where there's some questions. So as I said in the introduction, yes, no questions. They don't have to be on this. If there's something pressing that you want to ask about that's yes, no, by all means do that. There's two, two questions, so you get to, to do this two times. But also, you know, if there are things around this, this is resonating and you know what you want to do, maybe asking about whether to do something or not, or what the t if the time is right for something or not, any of those sort of things, whatever works for you. If you need to pause the video to think of a question, do so. But I'm just going to shuffle and say I'm, I'm asking for question one and question two. And when I answer, when I look at the answer, I'm going to look at it in the context of, of this reading. So question number one, think of question number one for pile number two. And the answer is... No, stormy relationships, trouble strikes, uproar. So there may be something strategic you're thinking about in this space. It's not the best way to do it. You could also be saying that if you were asking, will I do this relatively easily? The answer might be no, it's going to be a bit stormy. This energy is like that. Um, but, but you're still going to be successful, remember. So then we'll go to question number two. Ask, ask question number two. And the answer is... Yes, taking flight, uplifting at peace with decisions. So this might have been an either or, and this was not the right thing to do, and this is a better one. Or it could be, again, like if this is all going to happen, is it still going to succeed? And it's saying yes again. It depends on what you're asking. But one is telling you that the answer, the question has a lot about relationships that's going to be tricky. The other is saying this has got a lot of um, oomph to it. You know, you can rise with that energy. Okay. So to finish off, I just want to get you a blessing because I feel when you're dealing with the rule of law, it's kind of good to have a blessing around you. You know, mankind's or humankind's or whatever you want to say, person kind's uh, rule of law. What is a blessing for you? A blessing of the air. Oh, look there in the flight and moving upwards. And like this is like the new way of thinking. This is saying like it's a new philosophy that you can bring in, that you can... And, you, and your great way of communicating, all of that sort of thing as well. So I think this is saying you will have the ideas you need, the inspiration you need, the words you need. That's all going to be fine. There could be some difficult people to deal with. You're dealing, you're coming out of a very stuck, rigid environment to bring in something that's a little bit more creative. But but you have you have more than enough brain power to be able to argue your case for this. So I hope that that resonates for you, Paul. Too. I hope that you enjoyed the reading. Uh, do go and see Rena's to sort of see how this fits with divine law as well, because uh, I do think there's a lot of divine inspiration coming to you. If you like the reading, please like and subscribe. If you care to share in the comments, I'd love to hear. Otherwise, I hope to see you in future readings. Welcome, Pile 3, to your reading. So you came to the reading with the Antiquarian Tarot, and the reason I chose that one is I felt with its sort of pictures from the past and so forth, its sort of collage sort of oldy worldy type of feeling. I felt like this is is talking about the the rule of law very much around I guess social constructs and around what we tend to think of the law governing in one form or another. So when we look at this, you know, we have this sort of very regal looking person who's looking out over over I guess you know, her courtroom here and and making the decisions that are very material. So it's very interesting that we have a material and achievement-oriented energy coming out with the visions of life tarot. So achievements here feels to me that it's not as clear in the visions of life tarot what suits we're talking about, but this feels very much like a seven of pentacles energy. This is strength, so stamina. So there's a sort of thing here about having the, the capacity, looking at, at the rule of law in this world as how you can work within that to achieve things and to, to be strong, to be strong in achievement and outcome. And the same sort of energies are showing up astrologically. Moon in Virgo, the chance to boost health, vitality leads to satisfaction, contentment. There's a sense of you will feel that the rule of law is reasonable if you can achieve for your efforts and your strengths and that you can do it harmoniously with others, enjoy life, music, love and romance, sun and libra, harmony. 
also to me has almost, I know that's library, but it almost has a Taurian feeling to it. So I feel that your sense of the, the rule of law and whether it's working or not is whether or not it provides for really good, the good life to come from efforts well done. So you, if you are in a situation where you feel that you're in a community, in an organisation, in a social structure where people will be rewarded for the efforts that they put in and for the strengths that they have and that everybody can achieve a good life, then you will feel that the rule of law is operating. If you think that's not the case, then you're going to have a concern with whether or not the rule of law is applied. So you have a very, very pragmatic view about this. It's, it's not so much a philosophical thing about some greater good, but it's more a sense of what is the practical application. I will, I will support the rule of law if I think that it is applied fairly and it allows everybody a chance to grow and achieve. If I feel as though the rule of law is set up to favour certain you know, class systems or spiritual beliefs or whatever it is, then I do not, I think it is a fake rule of law. So I think you have very much a, how does this actually manifest? Is, is it actually being fair? Is it being just? Or is it a structure that's set up that precludes certain people and, and favours certain people? So very interesting because like in, in, again, like that sense that you only know that over time. And this is this sort of deck to me felt like justice over time. So I think you have a very practical way of looking at it. It's not it's not philosophical per se. It's not spiritual per se. Not to say that you're not philosophical or spiritual, but around this, it's kind of like the rubber hits the road on whether or not the system provides for everybody to be able to be comfortable and rewarded in alignment with what they're prepared to put in for it. Is it fair like that? So let's get a little bit more detail. So let's see a little bit more about what characterises your sense of justice. Then we're going to have a look at the situation you're in at the moment to see how it aligns with that. Then we'll have a look at what your cause is and then a little bit around the connection to Rena's reading in the divine law. So firstly, a little bit more to describe your sense of justice. Six of Swords, Ace of Cups reversed, Page of Pentacles, King of Swords, Knight of Swords. So you definitely, like with the Page of Pentacles there in the centre, the, the material outcome of this, the capacity to be able to plan within a system and grow is, is very much part of how you judge this. You're not sentimental about it. This doesn't mean that you're cold-hearted. It doesn't mean anything like that. It's just that for you, it's... You know what? You can have all the pretty words in, words in the world about all this sort of stuff and lots of highfalutin sort of ideas about, you know, yeah, the, the, the broader justice and the evolution of humanity. But, you know, really, when it comes right down to it, can people have a good life? Because we have enough resources on this earth to do that. And if we aren't sharing those resources and allowing for that, then there's something unjust. Can people have a sense of peace of mind that they're moving forward? And then will the systems that are there be fair, because the King of Swords is very much about fairness, but also, also dynamic enough to allow that to happen? So it's very, very practical. You would be sort of someone who would be an amazing manager, an amazing boss, an amazing political leader, because you're going to look at how it actually manifests and whether it's fair. That, that's the ultimate test for you. It's not, you know, which lawyer had the, the best words and the best argument. It's like, you know, what are we really seeing here? Like, let's throw all the, the BS out and let's just look at what is actually happening with this. So you're very, very practical. So given that, what kind of environment are you in at the moment in relation to having that kind of belief structure about law, the rule of law? Judgment, the star, the Three of Cups, Five of Wands reversed, the Devil. <laughs> Devil's come up quite a bit in this, which kind of makes sense because the Devil can be bound to laws or rules that are actually restricting and so forth. Overall, you're in a pretty good position, I would say. You've had some ahas, you know how to do this, you've probably had some achievements, you, 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 you kind of walk the talk and you've proven the thing. I think you've got some good people around you, causes for celebration. You might have just come out of some sort of a battle where fairness really mattered, and so this has kind of really crystallized this belief structure that you have. So you feel a calling, in fact, to have that sort of sense of hope and growth for all within environments that are often quite restrictive or, 
or you know hide things in the shadows so i think i think that you've you've kind of achieved something and and maybe against the odds to some degree and you've proven it could happen and you want to share that with others uh, and you see a calling for that to to really you know make that occur like as i say either in somebody who creates policy or law or somebody who is you know a boss or a leader or a mentor or something like that but you are aware of the shadow and you're balancing flexibility with the shadow it's like it's it's actually saying flexibility is the way that the 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 righteousness here doesn't become self-righteous so you're very aware that can occur over a period of time so again very pragmatic like people couldn't pull the wool over your eyes you know if they tried they'd be a fool you, you really do see things as they actually are so very much the kind of plain speaking you know what what is really happening here type of energy so what's your cause overall given that eight of swords nine of cups reversed the fool okay it's breaking out of this energy that's that's not achieving that you think everybody should be able to build and celebrate their dream and i agree with you <laughs> like i really like your energy like people should be able to do that people should be able to do something new they should be able to follow their path with that sense of serenity you want to break down anything that gets in the way of that and, and normally what gets in the way of that is people who are benefiting from a system that's unfair. So you want to break away from that kind of thing. Yeah, and as I say, you're not sentimental about it. So people wouldn't call you a bleeding heart or anything, and yet you actually will achieve more than you know, people that people might accuse of being a bleeding heart. So let's how this, see how this connects with your divine law. So with what's in Rena's reading, because this is very much, you know, let's just see how this is operating in the material world. I'm going to take no rationalizations and no compromises and no, you know, on the continuum of whether you go with the rule of law or you go with something different, you look at what the outcome is. You could sit anywhere in that continuum. It depends on what the outcome is. So you're like, what's, what is the outcome of this? That's what tells me whether the law is right. So let's see how that connects with divine law to connect you to Rena's reading. Two of pentacles reversed, three of wands reversed. Okay. So it'd be very interesting for you to go to Rena's reading because I feel almost as though what's happening here is that you do have a very strong sense about divine law as well, but it's almost as though you're putting it on the back burner. With two of pentacles reversed and three of wands reversed, it's almost as though you're trying to make sure that your sense of the divine law is not, does not overtake everything and become the new thing that sets up a system that's not right. It's like you're quite a powerful energy, I think. And as a result, it's almost like you go, I'm, I'm not going to push that. I'm only going to look at whether this allows everybody to rise. So I think the people who've come to this reading, you're, you do have a sense of the, the divine law, but it's like that's very private. And that's how you judge yourself, I think, and, and how you make sure that you stay on the straight and narrow about this. But it's not, you don't proselytize, you don't, you don't preach, you're not doing anything like that. It's, it's very much like what, what, is the outcome of this that's the focus for you so given that let's have a look at what mythos like what kind of mythology energy is sort of pushing this along because as i say you're kind of a lot of that's quite private i think but it's still there so we're going to look at a couple of mythological dynamics that could be operating and then we're going to have a look at how that might play out practically in your career or vocation so in terms of following what you believe the, the rule of law should be. So firstly, we get Athena. Okay. And then we get Thanatos. Oh, wow. It's interesting. We've got the devil over here. And we've got Thanatos and we've got Athena, which is sort of all the sort of thinking, judgment, clarity. Because that, that's an energy of, of high degree of independence and, and intellect that you bring to this. Like you are nobody's fool and you are nobody's puppet. And as I say, you would you would you would look at the law and and decide whether or not it is is doing what it's supposed to be doing. Now you're kind of like you've got that kind of focus. And Thanatos, the sort of sense towards sort of the the underworld, what's really going on underneath things. I think you'd have a very strong sense of where something needs to be moved on or shifted on when it isn't what it pretends to be and it is where it's pretending and so i think it's hitting there with the, the devil card so let's see how this is playing out 
around career or vocation. So Athena, this sort of sense of high degree of intelligence and independence. Nourish, feed your heart and mind, right livelihood, best job. You can only really nourish yourself and create this for yourself if you feel that it is, is your independent choice. Like, I think if somebody tried to sort of do an appeal to authority to you as a way of an argument, it just would not land. It would like, I don't care what you say about, oh, this is the authority. What's actually happening? That's, that's what you would look at. Then with Thanatos, confidence, walk your talk. Yeah, you walk the talk, you're bold. Therefore, you can go into the shadow without worrying. Because at the end of the day, you're still just going to be looking at what the outcome of something is. You're not afraid. Like you are very, very spiritually connected, but you, you're not even needing to show that. You're not even needing to show that. You, you, you're very clear on, on what your, your sense of judgment is. You, you judge, but you don't judge unfairly. You judge just on like what, what the evidence shows. And, and as I say, you don't take any prisoners with it. You know, like it's, but it is towards everybody having a chance, you know, everybody having a fair outcome. So... So that is good. So let's see what Archangel energy watches over you and then what your higher self has to say about it. So the Archangel energy. Oh, Tahariel. So, very interesting. This is, this is about the best outcome for everybody. It's about a new inclusive community. It's, it's, it's the, the mythology of the rainbow people coming in to bring in a much fairer type of system. So fairness, I guess that's really it. If I really got down to it, it's not about law, it's about fairness. For you, it's about fairness. Everybody within a community having the opportunity to become everything they can be. That will be good for everybody, but it's also, it's just fair. Like you have a really strong sense of fairness, which is probably why Libra came up strongly. For you actually like the library is very much about what is fair but but you may well be amongst a group of people that were meant to be incarnated at the moment to bring that in because that's what the what's being represented there for Tahariel, which is this sort of sense of beautiful community and and the new and the inclusive and so forth so let's see what your higher self has to say about that firstly follow the path of your soul so that your soul is there. I don't think you are meant to show it to people, though. I think you're just meant to kind of walk the talk here. Do not allow anyone or anything to stop you. I don't think you will. You're strong as really, really powerful sort of energy. And a light-filled angel is at your side. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> it watches over your every dark doorway. So when you are dealing with the dark energies where people are not are not walking that talk where people are actually setting up structures and rules to actually stop this energy. You have this, this powerful archangel around you, so, so know that that is there for you. Let's see what stars guide you as well, Power 3. The sixth house, this is all about service to others. Much of this is going to play out in workplaces and so forth. You're here to serve others, but you will also achieve in doing that. You kind of understand that, that when we help others, we help ourselves. Fixed. Yes, yeah, stay true to your vision. Stay true to your vision because it's very practical. Don't, I, I don't think you would get sweet-talked, but, but it's, that's a very strong part of your nature. Whether it's fair or not, that's, that's the bottom line for you. And... Mutable, then you can be flexible about how you apply it. So this is this is it. Yeah, this is the king of swords. Like what is right, what is fair, and then how do you apply it in a flexible way? So that and and that very much fits with, you know, you could have a sort of system of merit, but how do you apply it to to deal with all kinds of different talents, you know, like in a workplace, you know, how do you how do you recognize and and reward and and develop, say, neurodivergence compared to neurotypical and that kind of thing. It's like once you know what the basis here is being fair and being of service, then you can bring the flexibility in that so, that's, serves that. It's not the other way around. It's not like let's create a set of rules and then every once in a while, if we feel like it, we might bend them a bit. It's, it's let's build the rules on what is fair and then let's look at how we apply that in, in the essence of the rules that we've built. Okay, so 
Let's get to the questions. So as I said in the introduction, I'm going to shuffle a couple of times with a deck that has yes, no answers. Can be about this. If, if this really triggers something that you're dealing with at the moment, you could ask a couple of questions about this. It doesn't even have to be about justice if you don't want, but the way I'll be talking about it when I get the cards is in alignment with the, the theme of this. So if you need to pause the video, by all means do. I'm shuffling now for the first question. So the, first, the answer to the first question for pile three is... No, feeling fragmented, cracking under pressure. So there could be something something that you're thinking about doing in this space. It's not quite the right time to do it or it's not quite the right way to do it. It's very important for you to keep your energy you know, in, in this sort of environment. Okay, and then the second question for poll number three. The answer is... Yes, open to suggestions, front and set, set, uh, steady. This particularly would pick up if, if maybe you're looking at who you could collaborate with, who you could connect with. But more generally, it's saying yes to whatever it is that you're asking and being open to suggestions. And if you were wanting no, it might be saying that the way to get to no is to first of all listen to other perspectives. Because it's very important with this sort of energy to have all the perspectives so that you don't become the rigidity in another form that you, you're trying to defeat. Okay, so to finish off, I just want to finish with a blessing for you because I feel when you're dealing with this world's rule of law, we need a blessing around us. So let's see the blessing that is here for you at this point, pile three. A blessing on your family. So if some of this comes from wanting to sort of like take your family forward or anything like that, definitely. But it might be even a bigger family, your soul family, your sort of earth family, all of those sorts of things. I think it's really interesting. We've got a unicorn here. It's, it's, it's what's unique, but within a group. That's a really good distillation of this. The fairest system is a system that allows all the unique elements to thrive, again, according with what what potential you know, energy they're prepared to put into it. So they can achieve along with their, their input because all that is unique is valued, but there is also the responsibility for them to actually pull their weight. So it's a really nice energy and a family that operates well together or a community that operates together has that sort of principle as well. So I hope you enjoyed this reading, Pile 3. I hope that it resonated for you. Do go and see Rena's reading because you are connected really strongly to the divine law, but I think it's a very private thing for you. It's, it's maybe your nourishment. It's maybe your sort of food. It's very important to understand that because it's also what gives you a, a bigger picture on what you think is fair that you can apply then to, to what is fair in the material world. But beyond that... Uh, I hope, as I say, you enjoyed it. If so, please like and subscribe. If you care to share in the comments, I'd love to hear. Otherwise, I hope to see you in future readings.